Welcome to episode five of Pretend I'm Dumb About Star Wars. I'm Tom Merritt, and this is the show where I pretend that I've never seen any of these Star Wars movies before. I've jumped in and watched them in the order. They're numbered on the sleeve of the jacket of the VHS tapes. Eh, not VHS tapes, but still. I'm actually watching the most recent digital versions of these movies. So I've watched episodes one, two, three, and four. And this episode, I'll be talking about episode five. By the way, what the music you're hearing is the Andrew Allen Trio. Go pick up live from the Cantina Band at Andrew Allen Trio. Dot com. It'll be worth your time and money to do so. So yes, I have seen Star Wars before, lots of times, but I just wanted to approach these movies as if I hadn't and see what the different perspective is on them. So here we go with episode five, The Empire Strikes Back. We get the scrolly scroll at the beginning. Uh, we all know evil Lord Darth Vader is Skywalker's dad, so there's a little line in there about the evil Lord Darth Vader finds out about Skywalker. I'm like, well, he, I mean, evil Lord Darth Vader is a Skywalker, uh, but okay. Uh, also, the farm boy Luke now gets to lead the Freedom Fighters and even gets to choose base locations. Um, so that's cool for him. Uh, there is room for advancement in the Rebel fleet apparently. And like that, we start with spaceships. I like that we continue to start with spaceships regularly. Uh, Merc guy shows up. He's all bundled up because we're on an ice planet. That's what happens when you let the farm boy pick your base. You end up on an ice planet. Uh, and we find out pretty quickly, it gets sunk in my brain that his name is Han. Like, there's a Han old buddy, Han this, Han that. Okay, Han, try to remember that. Um, and then Luke says, oh, there are, there are no readings uh, no life readings, but I'm going to check out a meteor. And the next thing we know, a monster shows up. So the monster was shielded from the life readings, or it's not really alive, or or your life readings are pretty bad. Okay. Uh, but it is good to know that uh, Merc guy is with them. And uh, so is the Wookiee. He's, they're, they're still all there at the base, and they're junky ship. And uh, we get a little look from Leia when, he show, when Han shows up in the command room. Like, oh, okay, Leia likes Han. They call Skywalker Commander, uh, not General. I don't know why he got to pick the base if he's only a commander. Uh, and then we get a little, like, love connection, but not, but really bickering between Han and Leia. And, man, love scenes in these episodes are awkward. They are so awkward. Uh, Ham-fisted. Uh, and like that... Uh, we get uh, to hear about Han saying, oh, you know what? Remember that slug from the last episode? He's threatening my life, so I kind of have to run. So we're tying that connection. Remember the big slug guy said, if you don't bring me my money, I'm going to hunt you down. Well, he's getting hunted down now. Uh, and then we see the bots, R2 and 3PO show up. We get them. That's nice. Nice to have them along. At this point, I'm starting to think, Okay, so we got this weird love awkward scene. Maybe Leia is Padme, uh, Han is Anakin, and Luke is Kenobi. So Luke and Han kind of bicker a little bit, maybe because uh, they're fighting over <laughs> Luke's sister. Uh, and but Han and Leia bicker uh, like Padme and Anakin. I don't know. It seems like there's something there. Okay, uh, but then Luke doesn't come back because he got hit by a monster. They don't know that, but he hasn't come back. So Han shows he can be a good guy. And he goes out to save Luke again. Spending a lot of time with Anakin's kids here. We're not seeing much of anything else. Uh, but back to Luke. Uh, thought the monster at first was eating Luke's leg as he's chewing down. I'm like, oh my gosh, he amputated Luke. Uh, but Luke's actually just hanging from the ceiling. It made me think, is the monster the first wildlife we've seen? I mean, I think on Naboo, in episode one, we saw, we saw some wildlife running around on the planet, but that's it. We, don't, we haven't seen a lot of wildlife otherwise. Uh, then as Luke's hanging from that ceiling, he does the robe guy trick. And we, we've seen Kenobi and Anakin and even Qui-Gon do this all the time, where they're, they, they, they're real clumsy, they drop their lightsaber, and then they're just like, oh, I'll just levitate it with my mind back into my hand. And Luke does that. I don't think he got trained to do that. Uh, so he's just a natural all of a sudden. And then we're out into a survival movie. The, these series loves to play with tropes, and now we're doing a survival trope. It's alive, uh, and Han is going to eat Luke to survive. Now, actually, it's not what happened. Um, Han's scanner, though, is gargantuan. 
How did they not find that monster's life signs if you got scanners like that? Uh, Leia then back at the base, looking out, worried about her brother and her boyfriend. Uh, we get a little droid prejudice, C-3PO saying something about, you know, not bad for a human being. Back to Luke, and we hear Ghost Kenobi. Uh, oh, we actually see Ghost Kenobi. This is the first time we've seen Ghost Kenobi since he became Ghost Kenobi, and he says something about Yoda! So we get to actually find out what happened to Yoda. We didn't see him last episode. Although, Kenobi says, Yoda, the one who trained me, didn't Qui-Gon train Kenobi? I thought that's what happened. Maybe I got that wrong. Uh, then, of course, uh, Han finds Luke, who escapes from the monster and then is just kind of wandering out in the wilderness. Uh, and Han slices open the big, big animal. Uh, this looks really stinky. And Han even says it smells bad. Uh, and then the next morning, they get the little mini ships working and go out to find them. Good timing there. They call him Captain Solo, so he's a captain now. Uh, and then we're back in the base and more bickering. Um, and they say, no, Han, you can't leave because we won't let anyone leave till the energy shield goes up. Wouldn't it work the other way around? Like, oh, we don't have an energy shield. Let's get everybody out of here. Uh, but no, no energy shield, so you can't leave. And then there's bicker, 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 and Leia lays one on the lips on her brother. Whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, okay, it wasn't sensuous or anything. She was just trying to piss off Han. Uh, but that... When we as the viewers know their brother and sister, and when you as the maker of the movie know <laughs> their brother and sister, it was an odd choice. That's all I'm saying. I mean, they don't know, but all right. Uh, then they're looking at uh, this probe thing, and 3PO says, I speak six million languages. I don't know that one. It could be Imperial. Well, you're kind of useless then. Uh, then they finally say, oh, it is Imperial. Let's evacuate. But the shield and the... Now you evacuate? Now you tell every... Okay. Okay, fine. Uh, then finally, uh, we get to see Anakin. He's on one of the Republic ships, or I guess they're Empire ships now. Uh, and he says something about Skywalker being down on the ice planet. Uh, so he knows. He knows the identity. Does he know that's his Skywalker? I would assume there's not many Skywalkers out there. Uh, so he must know that's his son. And then we get a nice little reprise of the hangar scene where Luke kind of chastised Han about leaving. But this time it's kind of a wordless bro goodbye of like, I know you know that I know that we're good pals and I'll see you soon. Um, and uh, <laughs> then it turns out that turning on the energy field actually is what led the Empire to understand that the Rebels were on the ice planet. So... <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have turned it on at all and just evacuated. Anakin Vader, uh, shorter temper than ever, uh, is is like, oh, you gave it away? Well, pff, you're in trouble now. Uh, Leia apparently now does flight briefings. She's many talented. And uh, ion cannons are all you need. <laughs> If you want to get past the biggest ship we've ever seen in this entire five episodes. Uh, no, just two small ships and an ion, ion cannon. Ion cannon will blast that thing. It won't be able to do anything with one ion cannon burst. Well, if that was the case, why well, didn't even need a shield? Um, and so the Empire responds by saying, Ha-ha, what we're going to do is the same thing we did in episode two and send down a storm of clone storms troopers uh, and overwhelm your base. Oh, wait, no. What they do <laughs> is they land five or six big, slow walking things very far away from the Repub from the Revels base. Um, I mean, it's a strategy. Uh, so they send out the little two-seater ships again. Uh, I like that they're two-seater ships because you get the, the, the co-pilot, although the, that doesn't work out very well for Luke's co-pilot. Uh, the walking things are just too toppy heavy. Then we're back inside the base, and the junk ship is still not fixed. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, that's a piece of crap. Uh, R2 is being seen loaded into the little little tiny space fighter ship that Luke flew in the last episode. So I guess that's foreshadowing that Luke will get out of this. Um, 
And then uh, the Empire people start going after the main generator of the shield, which is apparently not behind the shield. That is a design flaw. They should have designed that better to have that shield generator be protected either by the shield it's generating or its own shield. Uh, we get a very exciting but, in my opinion, somewhat confusing battle. Uh, there's some very exciting parts, though, uh, for the most part, especially Luke almost getting stomped by the big elephant walker uh, things. Uh, then we see we see a dead dead robot, and I think, is that 3PO? Oh, no, it's not 3PO. Uh, then Han comes in and says, okay, uh, you, you've got to leave Leia. You've got to come with me. Everything's blocked off. And Leia's like, okay, give the evacuation code signal. Wasn't that the whole operation that we were doing here? Was the evacuation, you gave the evacuation code signal then? I thought that's what we were doing. Okay, anyway, uh, so taking down the big elephant thing was awesome. Uh, then we hear Imperial troops have entered the base, although the shield's not down yet. So I guess the shield doesn't stop individuals, only big things. And... Uh, not only Imperial Troopers, but Anakin has entered the base. He's about to run into his daughter. He doesn't know it's his daughter. We don't think, anyway. But there's some family drama going on there. Uh, 3PO starts... So we're like, okay. We haven't seen Jar Jar... Well, we saw him in Episode 3, but basically he didn't do anything since Episode 2. So 3PO is obviously now the new Jar Jar, for whatever reason. Uh, and then... The junk ship, everybody gets on board, and it's the junk ship just starts shooting on its own. It doesn't seem to be anyone in charge of it. It just starts shooting at stormtroopers. And then there's more bicker, bicker, bicker uh, between Han and Leia. And uh, Anakin just misses his daughter. Uh, but we should tell him his boy is outside if he's looking for his son. Um, Luke gets in his ship, takes off. No dogfight off the planet. Just flies away. I feel like... The evacuation route should have been that route because Luke didn't have any problems. But then, oh, uh, when uh, when when the uh, the junk ship takes off, they get into a battle. So they went the wrong way. Uh, anyway, Luke is going AWOL. He's going to find Yoda. Uh, R2 is kind of trying to stop him. And, and Luke says, nope, it's going to stay on manual control. I'm not letting you take over. Uh, so the junk ship's in a fight. It says it can outmaneuver those tiny small ships, which I don't understand how that works, but okay. It really kind of sucks because it can't go to hyperspace. It's worse than it was last episode. Last episode, it just looked old, but it fought well. This time, it, it doesn't even work. Uh, and they fly into an asteroid belt, and that's a lot of asteroids. Uh, cool getaway strategy, though. Let's go hide in the asteroid belt, and then the small ships get blasted by the big asteroids. Uh, Han gets to do some fancy flying. Chewie gets to do some fancy flying. And they do the smart thing of hiding on an asteroid. Cool. Okay. Uh, then Luke crashes on a swamp planet. And I have no idea at this point how he's going to find Yoda. It's an entire planet, and he didn't land where he wanted to. He didn't do scans for life forms. There were life forms everywhere. He just crashes. Uh, this planet is more like it, though. We're getting finally getting back to the original feel of like real alien worlds. It's a swamp planet. Uh, I thought we lost R2 a couple of times there. Sheesh. Uh, and he's been through a lot. Like he's been in every one of these episodes, and he always, you know, he saved the day in episode one. Uh, he's an elevator operator. There's all kinds of things that R2 can do. And at this point, Luke seems a little more like Anakin's mom than Anakin. He's just kind of calm but sad, just like she was. Uh, on the other hand, we get to see Anakin with his helmet off, and his head is messed up. Uh, it is not healed well. Since he got thrown into the volcano by Kenobi. I'm just saying. Yuck. Uh, back to Han and Leia. Bicker, bicker, bicker. Love bicker. Creepy bicker. Um, all right. This episode is silly. There's a lot more silliness going on. Like, there's there's good plot lines, too. But it is the silliest of the five episodes so far. Uh, lots of jokey jokes. All right. Then we find Yoda. Yoda's been alone too long. Like, why the act, Yoda? Oh, I'm just a dancing little puppet. Well, Luke doesn't know he's Yoda. He doesn't say he's Yoda, and Luke doesn't know what Yoda looks like. Um, so I'm kind of wondering, like, is he just messing with Luke? Is he trolling Luke? Yoda is just trolling Luke. D does he know who? Does he know who Luke is? Has he forgotten? Did he not know he was coming? Does he recognize him? How does he know? Um, also, I would think R2 would recognize Yoda at this point. Okay, back to the bicker bicker love story. 
if Leia's like her mom, she's going to marry Han by the end of this because that's how Padme and Anakin started. And then, well, we get a little action going on and Leia doesn't have a Jedi problem. Han's not going to be like, well, the Jedi Council says I shouldn't do this. No, uh, Leia and Han can do whatever, well, Han for sure, uh, can do whatever he feels like. Okay, Anakin Vader uh, says... We're not going to leave this asteroid field without my daughter. And then they say, oh, Palpatine's on the phone. He's like, oh, get us out of this asteroid field because it's interfering with the signal. Um, I mean, walls do interfere with Wi-Fi, so I guess a bunch of asteroids can interfere with Imperial Wi-Fi. Seems a little weird to have to leave the asteroid field uh, to make a call. But okay, finally, finally, we get Palpatine. We haven't seen him this the entire last episode. He's a full-on Sidious now. He's like, eh, everybody knows I'm Palpatine and Sidious, so I'm just going to wear the hood. My face is all messed up anyway. Probably should wear a hood. Uh, and then he says, oh, yeah, that's your son. Skywalker's your son. And Vader says, how is that possible? Now, Annika knew that the boy's name was Skywalker. Did he think he was cousin Skywalker? Uh, what, did he think he was Uncle Owen's kid? Like, I, I don't quite understand why he didn't put two and two together. But then it is true that Palpatine told Anakin, you killed Padme, and by implication, the babies as well. Uh, so Anakin's just realizing like, oh yeah, yeah, Palpatine totally lied to me uh, about, you know, maybe what else did he lie about? And Anakin starts to say, why don't we convert Luke? And of course, Palpatine, for his own reasons, says, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Because we all know there can only be two. <laughs> These two know that too. So they're basically saying like, you know, I'd like to kill you and replace you with Luke to each other. They're saying that. Uh, so that's that's a happy family. Uh, Luke starts to get more Anakin uh, with Yoda, who's now finally starts to act like Yoda. And Ghost Kenobi shows up. Uh, and Yoda says stuff about, you were angry, Kenobi. Kenobi was never really angry. Was he really angry? I don't think he was. Uh, also, he's, Kenobi says something about being taught by Yoda. Yoda didn't really, we never saw Yoda teach him. Um, then Yoda's kind of threatening when Luke says, no, I really want to do this. And He's like, I'm not afraid. And Yoda's like, oh, you will be. I will make you afraid. Mother. Yeah, uh, it's weird. Okay, back to the asteroid. Uh, and there's something outside. So Han and Leia and Chewie go out. And uh, no spacesuits, just breathers. So there must be some pressure in there. And we get the cool alien Minoc rats. They're like flying rats who eat wires. I love that. That's very alien, very cool. Uh, also like the line when they realize they need to leave, when Leia says, I am not a committee. It's not a committee. Good line. Uh, and then as we're flying out, we see teeth because they weren't in a cave. They were in a big space snake. Love that. Crazy. All right. Back to Swamp Planet and Luke's training much harder than his dad's. Uh, I don't remember Anakin ever having to stand on his head and balance Yoda on his foot. Um, and then you're like, look, is Yoda going to tell him about Anakin? They keep talking about, well, Darth Vader does this, but your dad Anakin did this. So then we're at a cave. We find out it's a cave. I thought it was just a tree root, uh, but it's it's like dark side on display with lizards, lots of lizards, and also some dark side. And when Luke goes in there, he sees Anakin, and then he beats Anakin really easily, which means it's a dream. But he cuts off Anakin's head, and then the face mask pops off, and it's Luke's face. Take the hint, Luke. Anakin's your dad. Vader's your dad. That's why it's your face. Because your face would kind of look like his face, but you don't really know what his face looks like. Okay. Uh, then we are back, and I see Rocket Guy. He is being hired by Anakin. Uh, it's actually Rocket Guy's son, son of Rocket Guy uh, at this point, because we know Rocket Guy died in episode two, but he's all dressed up the same as his dad. He's got the same kind of armor and rocket ship and everything. Um, and uh, the junk ship comes flying out of the asteroid belt straight at the Imperial ship and then disappears. We have no idea where it went. We thought At first I thought, like, are they really going to crash it in? Is that what they're going to do? Um, and then this guy's like... Uh, you track them. Well, what do you think we were doing? Of course we're going to track them. That's a useless order. Um, but when Junk Ship disappears, you know that guy is dead. Anakin is going to choke him. Okay. Then we get back to Swamp 
planet. And I thought I saw a Minoc fly through at one point, but I guess it was just another bird. Luke probably should have done something about his ship, uh, but Yoda says, well, you can get your ship out of there. You probably should have done something before now, but all right, just try it. And Luke says, I can't. And then Yoda has a great line, do or do not. There is no try. Then Luke gives it a shot, and it looks like he's going to be able to do it. I thought he was going to be able to do it. I thought this was going to be the big inspirational learning scene, but he can't. He gives up again. And then Yoda's like, I'll show you. Boom, here's your ship. Bang, on the ground. Uh, and Luke says, I don't believe it. And Yoda's like, that's why you fail. Drop the ship nicely on the ground where you can use it later. Uh, okay, so then we see, yep, that guy's dead. Uh, Anakin does not like apologies. Still don't know where the junk ship goes until, oh, reveal, it stuck itself to the back of the ship. Apparently no windows on that side. Still very clever. Like it just kind of stuck on to... Uh, the big Imperial spaceship. And then we get justification for me calling it junk ship because they're going to float away with the garbage. And you even hear Leia say, with the rest of the garbage. So they do that. The fleet dumps its garbage. Junk ship starts to float away with the junk. But then we see this ship, which you may recognize from episode two because you're quickly revealed that that is Rocket Guy's ship or son of Rocket Guy's ship. Uh, and so everybody knows where junk ship is going. Okay, back to where <laughs> uh, Luke, I'm sorry, is standing on his head. Uh, <laughs> and while he's standing on his head, Yoda says, uh, oh, you're seeing the future. Your friends are in pain. Uh, you could help them, but you can see the future sometime. But if you go, you'll destroy all for which they have fought. Damn. Also, Yoda, if you could see the future, why didn't you stop Anakin? Oh, future's always in motion. Also, I didn't make Anakin stand on his head and float rocks. Uh, finally, uh, then we see Han and Leia, and they're going to go to a cloud city. And you get these cool ships, and you get a really good planet, finally. Very capital-like when they land. It looks very much like the capital from the earlier episodes. Uh, and then there's Lando, who Han said was a friend, but the ships from Cloud City shoot at them. There's no one there to meet them. He looks really angry. Uh, and they had me going. Uh, I thought Lando was going to kill them or arrest them or, or like he was our rock, rocket guy had already gotten to them, but apparently not. They're friends. Uh, he's got a guy with robot ears, which is kind of cool. And apparently the junk ship used to be Lando's and Han won it from him in a game. Lando is also creepy to Leia. Everybody in this episode is real creepy to Leia. Uh, and then Lando calls it a hunk of junk. So see, I'm right. It is a junk ship. <sighs> then 3PO like takes a turn down a corner and gets shot. Now I'm thinking at this point it's Rocket Guy, although the voice doesn't sound quite right, but that's who would be there hiding for them. So maybe there is something nefarious. Maybe Lando is up to something. Uh, then the next thing we see Luke is ignoring Yoda. Uh, that's very much like Anakin. Like, I'm just going to do what I want. I'm going to go save my friends. And we get to see Ghost Kenobi again. And me, I'm yelling at the screen at this point, tell Luke about his dad. But then it turns out, like, these Jedi, man, they're manipulative. They don't want to tell Luke about his dad because they're hoping Luke will kill Anakin Vader. And if they tell Luke, oh, Anakin Vader's your dad, then Luke won't want to kill him. Uh, Yoda's always telling people to sacrifice for their friends. I kind of don't trust the Jedi, really. They haven't changed at all. Uh, but they let him go because they're like, Kenobi's with his hands out like, what you've learned could save you after all. Even though we told you earlier it would destroy everything. It might save everything. If you're really going to go, we don't want you to totally lose hope because um, we're manipulative. They're already planning on Leia. They're like, oh, no, there's another. <laughs> yeah, you know, just, just let him go. It's fine. Uh, then we see that the Wookiee has saved 3PO and is trying to... to put him back together. Something's up though. And we very quickly find out that that something is Lando made a deal directly with Anakin leads Leia and Han to a nicely laid out dinner. That was really nice of Anakin. Very thoughtful. Uh, somehow Han has a blaster though. Not good planning on leading your guests into a trap, but Anakin can stop laser bolts with his hand now. Like he has really gotten powerful. We're seeing that. Um, then it's some torture scenes. Uh, you've got audio torture with Chewie, although they did let him keep the parts of, of 3PO. 
which he didn't have when he went to dinner, but he, I guess they let him go back and get them. Uh, then you see Han about to be tortured, uh, uh, kind of a very similar scene to Leia in the last episode being tortured by by Anakin. So, you know, no doubt Anakin's an evil guy. Uh, and then Lando comes and he apologizes. So I guess Lando's not totally e- evil. Uh, Chewie gets uh, 3PO's head back on, although it's backwards. So it's kind of a callback uh, to episode two where 3PO's head was on the wrong robot. Uh, he always has problems with his body parts. And uh, wow, Han looks much worse after torture than Leia did. And he's, they didn't even ask me questions. Okay, so we don't think Anakin knows about Leia. He's talking about freezing Skywalker. Uh, eh, <laughs> that's you, Anakin, is what I thought. Uh, how did Anakin know Han was a captain? But he, he says, we will try it out on Captain Slowlo. Also, like, really? At the last minute, you're like, oh, wait, this could kill him. Uh, let's try it out on somebody else first, just to see. That's bad science. That's only a sample of one. Uh, also, Anakin, that's your daughter, um, just so you know. Leia looks at him like she's figuring something out at one point. But then, of course, she looks at Han and, like her mom, out of nowhere, tells a man she loves him. And Han, unlike Anakin, responds, I know. Ah, funny. Uh, at least they're not arguing over Jedi rules by the fire. Okay, so they really did freeze Han. I thought the Han thought Han was going to get saved, maybe by Luke or something, or Lando. But no. Uh, and Anakin gives Leia a look. And then Anakin says, I'm changing the deal. I want Leia and Chewbacca. Now, this could be because he's suspecting something about Leia being his daughter because, like, he just found out he had a son. Who knows how many there are? Uh, He didn't know there were twins, I don't think. But also, it could just be leverage over Luke. If they capture Luke and they unfreeze him, they could say, well, we won't kill your friend Leia and your friend Wookiee if you tell us that you'll join the dark side. Okay. Luke has no problem landing. It's a trap. Uh, he sees Han in a very funereal procession go through a hallway, but we can't tell if Luke can tell that's Han or not. Uh, but Rocket Guy is the smart one. He caught Luke, starts shooting after him, and herds him towards the chamber where Anakin's waiting. Leia tries. Leia is smart. You forget how smart she is in this episode. She's real smart and good with the blaster in the last episode. They didn't give her a lot to do this episode, but she yells, it's a trap. Uh, and then, oh man! We get the father and son battle. Uh, Vader shows up. Luke pulls out Anakin's uh, lightsaber to use against Anakin, who has his own evil lightsaber now, uh, for real. Although Luke is barely trained, so this is probably not going to be good. Then, then real quick, we're back to robot ears who helped double cross the Empire. Uh, Lando turns out to really be a good guy, although uh, Chew- Chewie very understandably tries to choke him and killed him, uh, and uh, and they all try to escape. And they actually try to act- to get Han back, but Rocket Guy, man, Rocket son of Rocket Guy is too good for them. He's too quick, uh, so they jump into the Rocket Guy ship and take off before Lando and Leia and Chewie can get there. That ship, if you remember from episode two, uh, it's taken a beating. So they, they're they showing the time has passed just when you look at that ship. All right, back to dad and son. Damn, Anakin is way better. Although we, get, we think that Luke is going to be frozen and then he does a Jedi jump, so that's pretty cool. Um, Anakin gives himself away that he doesn't know Yoda's alive. He thinks Yoda got killed in that order where all the clone troopers turned on the Jedi because he says, Obi-Wan taught you well. Now, at this point, I would think, shouldn't Luke be trying to find Leia? But no, this is the thing that even though he doesn't know Anakin is his dad, this is the thing that Yoda told him he had to do. You have to face Vader. Um, Then we get this great scene where Anakin, Anakin Vader, is using Dooku's trick from episode two to pull things off the wall with his mind and throw them at Luke. Dooku did that to Anakin and Kenobi and Yoda. Uh, and now Anakin is doing it to Luke. Nice call back there. Not smart breaking the window, though, if it's depressurized. Luke almost falls out. And at first I think, well, why isn't Anakin just killing him now? But you're right. Anakin doesn't want to kill him. Anakin wants to convert him. Uh, back to R2 elevator operator, uh, who is going to override security. Apparently there's nothing he can't do except tell a power terminal from a computer terminal. Uh, and just like that, uh, it's the planet station all over again. 
Uh, where the heck is Luke going next? We're back and he's like wandering away from Anakin and they fight, they fight, they fight. And oh, Anakin chops off his son's hand. How cold is that? I am your father. That's colder. So not only does he play Dooku by pulling the things off the wall, not only does he play Dooku by cutting off Luke's hand, but then he says, hey, guess what? I'm your father. And all of a sudden, it's not about Dooku anymore. Anakin is playing the part of Palpatine. We have got Luke in the same position that Anakin was with Samuel Jackson and Palpatine, where at that point, Anakin thought Padme was threatened and he had nowhere to turn but the dark side, right? Or, or else he would lose. Now you've got Luke in that same position. He doesn't have a direct loved one like Padme, but he's got loved ones like Leia and Han that, are, that he thinks are under threat from Anakin, from Anakin Vader. Uh, and now Anakin Vader tells him, I am your father. So he's messed up, nowhere to turn, totally vulnerable, the only place to turn. He's hanging by a thread. He's got to turn to the dark side. And Anakin knows this. Anakin's been through it. Anakin knows there's only one choice for you now. I've made this choice. Now you're going to have to make it too. And Luke falls. It just drops. He says no. It is Luke's Samuel Jackson moment. He says, no, I am better than you, Dad. I am not going to turn to the dark side. I'll die first. And he drops. That is amazing. Anakin has got to be stunned. You can't read his facial expressions because of the helmet, right? But uh, Luke just made the choice that Anakin couldn't two episodes ago. Um now, Luke's not in a good position. He's hanging by an antenna. And uh, if you remember, Ghost Kenobi said, if you go face Vader, I can't help you. So we're not going to get any help, even though Luke's going, Ben, Ben, Ben. And then he says, Leia. Out of nowhere. He gets it. He's like, that's my sister. He, he doesn't know it, but he knows it. And Leia hears him because they're brother and sister. They got that connection. They got the force connection. And it works. <sighs> Uh, so then it looks like Anakin's giving up on Luke and just just goes away. Uh, Leia does some fancy piloting. Chewie, Chewie does some fancy piloting. Uh, Luke is saved. He's messed up. He's cut all the ribbons. Uh, and then we get a more sisterly kiss because they, they know. They know now something is up with this. Uh, and then we get a nice call back. Han had said it's not my fault the first time the hyperdrive didn't go. Now the junk ship still can't get into hyperdrive. And Lando says it's not my fault. Then we find out. No, Anakin did not give up. He knew the hyperdrive had been disabled. So he's going to catch them all. He's like, oh, I'll get I'll get Luke back. I'll figure out. Uh, maybe I won't freeze him. I'll figure out something. Uh, and then... <laughs> and then R2 says to 3PO, who he's repairing, like, oh, you know, the hyperdrive's broken. And 3PO doesn't believe him because 3PO is sometimes very dense. Uh and you're wondering, like, well, if the, R2, why don't you fix it? And then he finally does. He fixes it. And you think it's going to be bad for that commander on that Imperial ship, that the junk ship just flew into hyperspace. But no, Anakin is so depressed about losing uh, his chance to capture his son. He, he doesn't even choke a commander. That's sad. Uh, final scenes, Lando is now dressed like Han, piloting the junk ship along with Chewie. It's kind of like, a, like, oh, that must have been what it was like before Han got the ship. Uh, they're going to Luke's home planet. Uh, Luke now has a robot hand like his dad, but robot hands have made some good progress because this one looks like a hand, whereas Anakin's robot hand just looked like a claw. Uh, we're probably going to see the slug guy again uh, because that's where Han would be taken by a uh, rocket guy, one would assume. Uh, Anakin's still after Luke. We don't know what's going to happen with Yoda. Uh, is, is Luke going to go back to Yoda? Is it going to give away Yoda's position? Will Palpatine then want to hunt down Yoda uh, to finish off the Jedi? Very little Palpatine in these last two episodes. So I'm assuming we're going to see more of him soon. They, they built him up a lot in the first three episodes. And overall, the, the, the pace was a little slow at the beginning of this one, but but quicker, we hit a faster pace. And it, by the end, it really felt like the pace of the first three episodes. It felt like we were back in the saddle again. A uh, little bit of a departure in episode four, and sometimes you have to do that to, to vary things up. Uh, but we are back in the spirit of the first three episodes. By the end of episode five, The Empire Strikes Back. And there you go, folks. That 
is me telling you about Empire Strikes Back as if I were dumb about Star Wars. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you should definitely stick around next time when I'll talk about episode six, which I hear is called Return of the Jedi. Maybe Yoda is going to team up with Luke now. Maybe they turn Anakin back to the good side. Who knows what's going to happen? I know what you're going to do, though. You're going to go to andrewallentrio.com and check out Live from the Cantina Band, the Star Trek album, and all the other good stuff there. And I will talk to you next time. <laughs>